Well, hello and welcome to another Tyrrell's Classic Workshop. This time round, I'm on location in possibly one of the most beautiful uh, and idyllic locations in the world, the Italian lakes. More specifically, Lake Iseo in the north of Italy, and I'm here at the Bellini Nautica boatyard. The Bellini family own a business that restores classic Riva powerboats. And uh, I've been invited here, uh, a massive honour, by the Bellini family to tune a particular boat. Um, now these are probably one of the best examples of La Dolce Vita, Italian craftsmanship with uh, mahogany and teak and mirror finish varnish and all that good stuff. And I'll be looking at some of the ways that they restore these boats, but this particular machine that I'm here to tune the engines on is a very, very uh, rare honor indeed. Um, I'm thrilled to have been invited to do this. It's a Riva Aquarama, which was the, the height of Carlo Riva's powers, if you like, in the 1960s. Fantastic powerboat. And Ferruccio Lamborghini commissioned Riva in 1968 to make one of their Aquaramas. And he had two of his car engines brought over and marinized, uh, made suitable for marine use to put in uh, a Riva Aquarama and it became known as the Riva Lamborghini. And don't forget that his engine, his V12 engine in the 1960s was state of the art. He launched it in original 3.5 litre form in 1963 as a four camshaft V12. And it took Ferrari four years to catch up with that technology in their road cars. They didn't have to look very far from their racing car parts bin but Lamborghini provoked them into bringing their technology more up to date. And it's two of those engines that are put in the Riva Aquarama. And actually, this is a sort of melding of two of the most wonderful Italian disciplines of the era. It's Italian craftsmanship um, times two, and the actual combination of them is greater than the sum of their parts. And this boat is actually worth a lot of money. I'm not at liberty to say how much because owners are precious about these things, understandably. But if I tell you it's one of the most expensive machines in the world of any age and any provenance, any type that you will ever come across. So that tells you this is not an inconsiderable uh, sum. I'm competing with uh, birds here in this amazing um, shed shed is rather selling it short but we're going to get the, the the boat out they're going to put it in the water we're going to warm the engines up and i'm going to have the opportunity to tune this wonderful almost priceless piece of lamborghini history ferruccio used to come to the italian lakes a short drive away from sant'agata bolognese where the factory was and cento where his car factory was and he used to come and enjoy his riva on the italian lakes and it was just a wonderful sort of relaxation for him, really, having two of his engines blasting him around the Italian lakes. And the interesting thing about the way these boats are constructed is they are very much freshwater boats. They can be used in salt water, but they're primarily built for fresh water for lakes. The way the hull is designed, it's a shallow angle hull. It's designed to plane on flat water. If it doesn't, if it's on the sea, it makes for quite a rough ride, actually, because the boat bounces over the waves, as opposed to with a deeper hull, it cuts through them. But um, anyway, we'll press on, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a look what the uh, Bellinis have to say, we'll have a little sneak peek at the museum and the factory, and then this boat's going to go in the water, and I'm going to have the opportunity to tune the engines. Here we are in the fantastic Bellini collection of Riva powerboats. And I'm joined by uh, Mr. Battista Bellini and Martina Bellini, who are uh, the son and daughter of Mr. Romano. Romano. Romano Bellini. And they're sharing their wonderful knowledge of these fantastic, beautiful hand-built mahogany boats. And just tell me a little bit about the business, Battista. You know, you, you've inherited this, your father started this. Yep. This is a, a fantastic collection you have here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and is there almost one of every model here? 
Yeah, here, this is the most complete collection in the world. My, my father started to collect this boat when he was 17, when uh, his friends started to collect a uh, uh, scooter to go yeah. with it. Yeah? And he would like to, to buy both because uh, there was the passion was already inside him. So he started with the first boat, then we, our business is to buy them in the market, restore and sale. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes clients all over the world just bring boat to restore here. But once we buy them in the market, we restore them. Sometimes happen that this is a love story, the restoration. So we just say, okay, we restore it. The boat is too beautiful, just keep in the collection. So one another, we come here with more than 25 boats in the collection. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I have a similar problem. Yeah. But maybe, unfortunately, not quite as much of a problem as you have, <laughs> because all my money is tied up in the business. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a, this is a dilemma when you get something in and you go, hmm, that's beautiful, exactly, yeah? yes. <laughs> that's special. So, um, and what, what do you do in the business, Martina? What I am the head of marketing and communication, so I manage uh, um, both sides of the company, uh, the collection, so the, the tourist part with the collection and uh, the Riva Quarama rental. And on the other side, I manage the communication. So the website of Bellini Nautica, the social media management, and these things. Okay, so if anybody wants to rent a chauffeur-driven Riva Aquarama, you can arrange that on one of the Italian, all of the Italian lakes, or just this and Lake Como, for example? Actually, at the moment, only on Iseo Lake. Right. But um, I will manage everything, and I also am the driver. Uh, it yeah. depends on the, if they are man or woman. Oh, so I if see. Woman, I can go. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is like I'm the, just the, Bellini, the Bellini introduction <laughs> agency. <laughs> you vet them and say, oh, you yeah, know, not bad. <laughs> I'm liking that. Oh, it's a spin-off business. Yeah, it's a business within a business. So, <laughs> all good, all good. And of course, um, we're here to look at the Lamborghini Riva, which is a very special boat. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot now because I don't know how much history you know about this boat, actually. Yeah, you? I think you know more than us. Oh, <laughs> that's a good comeback. <laughs> Straight back at me. Yeah, so in 1968, I think, Ferruccio Lamborghini by that time, he was making the four-liter engine on the production line, the, the V12. It was used in all the front-engine cars, the uh, Islero, the 400 GT. So what he did was take two engines off the production line and put them in a Riva Aquarama. And this boat is well publicized. It's uh, had two or three famous trips. I, I saw a video of Fabio Lamborghini, my friend Fabio yeah. Lamborghini, in the boat on the lake, which is fantastic. With Carlo um, Riva. Sorry? With, With Carlo Riva. Oh. Okay, well, there you go. What can you say? So we're going to tune the engines on that and get it uh, working in uh, great order. And uh, we're going to give it a little test on the lake at some point. So, um, yeah, all good. So this is Mr. Lamborghini's yes, Aquarama. Is. What is the story of the Riva Aquarama? What makes it so special? Yeah, the Riva Aquarama is the, the icon of the model of the boats, uh, the lake boats for the, uh, all over the world, actually. So everyone knows about the Aquarama. And the special things of this model is, first of all, obviously the design, the perfection in the details, yes. and we can see that, and uh, the technicalities in navigation. So nowadays, I don't think there are uh, modern boats that can navigate uh, on the water like that. Yes. They are really perfect. Uh, really stable? Stable, perfectly stable. When you millimeters, you can very manage millimeters with this kind really? of things. Yeah, they are wow. amazing. Like a, an Italian supercar? Like an Italian supercar, yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> and especially this kind of boat, uh, that is the Lamborghini, is the second series Riva Parama. And the second series, uh, the particular thing is the shape of the bow that is in between with the first series and the last series. The nose that is different than the last series. Beautiful. This is one piece perfectly made on just this model. Right. So it doesn't fit uh, with another Aquarama with a different uh, wow. Okay.
Well, here we are at the gritty end. Yeah. This is an aquarama by the looks of it. Aquarama super. Aquarama super, because yeah. it's long, yeah? yeah. Actually, aquarama super, last series, with two air taken on sides. So one on 19 built only. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is a very special one. Wow. And this is, so this is all hand laid mahogany here, presumably? Yeah. The sides of the aquarama uh, are made by three layers. One like this, the other like this, and the last, uh, that is the aesthetically the most important, with panels uh, that from trees that are 12 meters high without nodes uh, inside the trees. Right, no knots. Yeah, no knots. No knots. Okay, and are the inside layers also mahogany? Or yeah, yeah. So the whole boat is mahogany? All mahogany, yeah. There are three different kind of type of mahogany, uh, sipo, uh, wow, fantastic. Is this almost prepared for its first layer of... Uh... Not yet, not yet, because we are finishing to put inside the sides the screws. There are more than 1,000 screws on the sides of the boat. Really? Yeah. And after that, we, we prepare uh, with the same papering all the three sides again, with very thin uh, paper. Yep. And then we start the damage process. We wow. turn up and down the, the boards again, and then start the damage process. How do you disguise the screws? Do you actually paint them the same colour as the... Uh... Actually, there is a part you can see here. We put the screw inside, and then we have to, to bring a, a, a piece of the wood out, and then we have to put the oh. same piece of the wood Seriously? out in, because the vein of the wood at the end has to be the same. Oh. So you take, you take a plug out, for want yeah. of a better description, yeah. a plug. You, yeah. you take a bit off the back, yeah. you put the screw in, and then and you then put the seam. Oh. Because the vein of the wood is this. Incredible. Incredible. What craftsmanship, really. Oh. And this is with a thousand screws on, yeah. each, on, on each boat. Yeah. Oh, wow. And this is the original process. With, with, with the modern materials, we just we can glue up the sides if you want, the right. glue on the sides. But we would like to have everything original with the original process, with concourse standard and uh, certifications. Yeah. Wow, okay. And talking of concourse standard, we can have a look at another boat, which is a bit further on in the process, can't we? So this is a stage or two on, by the looks of it. And how many coats of varnish are on here then, at this moment? Generally, we need to put 28 as a standard. But here, we are already around 30. 30? Yeah, 30. Because now the, the, the surface side varnish at the moment are much lower than a lot of years ago. Ah. For obviously environmental problems. Yes. And uh, sometimes happen that we need to put on the, on the boards more than 30 layers of edge. And how thick does that become? What is the sort of thickness? Uh, not a lot actually, because they would absorb ah. the most part of that. Okay. In fact, after two years, generally suggested to put another cycle made by five layers, ah. because after two years, they would absorb it. It's, it's Incredible. And does it make the wood stronger, absorbing the uh, mm, no, the varnish? No, don't no. say that. It just, but it just carries on. Just the process just yeah, slowly does. carries yeah. on. It's a whole science, isn't it? Yeah. So this is on the way to having that legendary mirror finish. Yeah, yeah it's like skin. It is. Yes, yeah, like a baby, because the full restoration process uh, takes about nine months. So it's perfectly like a baby. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well. This is the chrome stuff of, for example, one Riva Ariston. So the, the important thing when you go to see or to buy a boat that needs restoration is that all the chrome stuff is complete. Uh. Because it's very difficult to find original spare parts in the market. Very expensive to produce new spare parts. Right. Oh. But especially that stuff, chrome stuff, is made uh, on that boat. So on a particular hull number of a model. Right. For example, in order to see if uh, a, a boat is original when you are buying one, uh, you can... This is a, a secret. Oh. So, <laughs> pay attention. Okay. <laughs> not, not now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
This is the nose of the bowl of the boat. Beautiful. And here inside, there is the hull number of the boat. If this match the real hull number of the boat that the seller is saying, uh -huh. okay, you probably have originality. Right, so this is what you call a matching numbers boat. Matching numbers boat. A bit like cars with their original yeah. engine. Oh, okay. May I just pick up one of these parts? Yeah. This is, the, this is the, so heavy. This is cast, is this cast steel? Yeah, this is, this is chrome. Everything is chrome. Is it brass? Stuff. Yeah, brass. brass. So heavy. Wow, that's beautiful. In fact, when we restore them, we don't change them. We just bring them to re -chrome. And you have to use brass because the likes of mazak or zinc will be too pitted to yeah, reuse. Yes. And all these little fittings, it's amazing because these days surely they would use stainless steel for example. But, wow. This is for the ropes in the stern of the bowl. Okay. Wow. Just beautiful. And also the really little stuff, we recruit everything. So wow. this is the part for the cover and for the sand cushion of the bowl. So cool. everything goes in the chrome Incredible. department. And do you do that here? No, no. There yeah. is a an um, historical supplier that does this yeah. kind of work. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. Well, this is a, a river boat in a different place, isn't it? Yeah. This is all going to become. More than one. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes. Luckily so, more than one. Yes. Please explain what, this is obviously yeah. mahogany, but uh, you said different types for different parts. Actually, these are the mahogany panels uh, that we use for the last layers of side, uh, on the sides of the boat. Right. So the most important aesthetically. Right. Uh, these panels are, come from trees that are more than 12 meters high. Wow. They stay here for five years to season. And five years? Every month we have to check the humidity of the wood in order to see if everything in the process is going the right way. Right. And another big work that we have to do on this panel is that you see here they are divided by the same type of wood, one each other. Yes. Why? Because if they stay together, they will change colors. Ah. And we need uh, to have the same color for the panels of the sides, of because course. otherwise it's not aesthetically perfect. Yes. And every two months, we need to move this little piece for about three, five centimeters, because otherwise this piece will change the color of the wood in this place. This isn't the sort of thing you learn overnight, is no, it? No, you don't. And sometimes, I'm guessing there have been some expensive mistakes. Over exactly, the... yes. <laughs> we, won't, we won't ask. I don't want to upset you, so we'll okay. just <laughs> put that to one side. So this is fascinating. What are these? About five millimeters thick, something like that? Four, actually. Four, okay, yeah. And this is very long. This is yeah, more easy. than 12 meters. So more we need to add trees that are more than 12 meters because the there is one panel only for the sides of the Aquarama. And they're what's called Carvel built, aren't they? It's smooth. It's not like clinker built. No, they? no, no, absolutely. Completely smooth. Yes. Yeah. Um, wow. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> well, the moment of truth. The beast is coming out of its slumber and is about to be put in the water. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, so um, I've got all my uh, equipment with me. I'm uh, going to be. We're going to warm up the engines on it, and then I'm going to uh, to uh, to tune both the engines. This 24-cylinder um, piece of Italian artistry. Ooh. I think I'll just move actually. Well, I have my box of tricks with me, with my hose pipe and my screwdriver and my stethoscope, but at great expense and with extreme research and development, I've come up with the, uh, the Acme patented Mark II Tyrrell tuning hose pipe, which uh, the more keenly observant amongst you will notice is normal than my usual hose pipe. And this is so I can reach across the engine and um, hear what's going on at the other end, because 
Um, actually, the hole here where the engines are is quite big, and because the engines are next to us, I have to reach across to the middle to tune one side. So I'm going to be using this extremely high-tech piece of equipment, and uh, I, I hope it works, having travelled a long way. Um, I mean, as you can imagine, I had problems getting this through customs. They wanted to know what... Um, what it was for, but um, <coughs> we won't go there. Um, so anyway, I'm going to uh, start tuning the engines now. I've tuned the engines now and we've achieved the result um, and um, we're going to do a, a road test, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a, a splash test now of the boat to uh, make sure it's performing properly and uh, pulling smoothly, manoeuvring smoothly and um, going across uh, this beautiful lake uh, super smoothly. So um, yeah, not a, bad, uh, not a bad day's work, not a bad day in the office really.
got a message to send to your soul In short, it's something of a plea You work from dawn to midnight every single day And all I ask is a little time for me You're caught in a crazy street You taste success But sometimes you gotta stop Or it leads to loneliness So take time out Take time out Take time out And let me show you what life is I'd first of all like to thank the Bellini family for uh, the access to this incredibly um, amazing piece of Italian craftsmanship and uh, for letting me loose with my screwdriver and hose pipe on it and uh, so a huge thanks to them and uh, we'll be back thanks for watching and we'll be back with something else very soon.